Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus, saints. We just want to say uh, that we love you so much. And there's just nothing, nothing, nothing that you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Today is what they call Friday. All right. Today is what we call Friday. In the name of Jesus. Let's say a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for being who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being worthy to be praised, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God, through the night, waking us in the morning light. Lord, we just thank you. We appreciate you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, thank you for going before the earbone of the listener on today. I pray, Lord God, that you will have your divine way, Lord God, in this time, in this place, in this hour. Lord, we dedicate our days to you. We give our days to you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of jesus lord thank you lord god for knowing all thank you for seeing all lord god thank you for being omnipresent in the name of jesus lord thank you for going before this podcast lord i pray that you would allow me to say the things that you desire for me to say nothing more nothing less In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We decree, Lord God, a day, Lord God, of pleasing you. We decree a week of pleasing you. We decree a month of pleasing you. We decree a year, 2024, of pleasing you, Lord. We decree and declare 2024 your year, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for showing up and showing out on the saints' behalf. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And so on yesterday, okay, we begin to talk about of the beginning. Yes. We begin to talk about the beginning, and um, I know uh, for some, it might have been hard to understand, all right? For others, you were right there, amen? How do I know this? Well, I can feel it, okay? I can just just feel it, all right, in the name of Jesus. And so, only thing we were saying uh, on yesterday is that in order for us to leave, Okay, um, come go back through. Um, where's my, where's my, where's my, where's my, in order for us to leave, all right, from the ending, go back to the beginning, we got to know where we're going, amen. Don't we have to, do you agree that we, you and I, we have to know where we're going? We do, in fact, have to know where where we're going amen um and it's high time all right it is time for us to make it back amen it's time for us to make it back so we are going to of course walk on water amen let's walk on water in the name of jesus let's see here let's see let's see let's see um hang on just a second just a second hallelujah hallelujah let me see here because i want to make sure we don't we're not having a connection problem again come on now It's God's desire for us to be ready. Let me write this down because I know those of you that minister, those of us that minister, the enemy desires all the time to take our thoughts. All right. So while I'm working on this, let me write this down. Um, Let's see. I'll be born again all right so while i'm doing this let me let me see let me see let me see let me see 
because it's just not normal. It's just it's just not normal to you know the enemy the enemy he don't like us you know he he don't like us at all he just don't and guess what I don't like him either so the feeling is mutual um let's see real quick I don't like him either. Amen? Yeah. Okay. So let's go to John. We were in John on yesterday. We're probably we're probably going to come back to the beginning. Amen. John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3. Uh, yesterday I asked the question, did Moses, what did Moses see? What did Moses see Adam means Odom Odom means red red a uh, red clay could be but red R E A D amen R E A D and uh what did Moses see uh John chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God so if the word is God, we are reading the word. Moses saw the hind parts. What did Moses see? Did Moses see uh, two muscular uh, muscles that were joined together with a crack? I don't think Moses saw that. Amen. Did Moses see the word? I believe Moses saw the word. I believe Moses read the beginning. Amen. I believe he read the beginning. Amen. Um, yeah, I believe he read the beginning. Uh, John chapter 3, verse um, 3 reads like this. Let's read 1. Let's start with 1. All right. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Powerful sayings. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, except a man, hear me, and Lord, thank you for going before this podcast. Except a man be born again, he cannot, Jesus said, he cannot see the kingdom of God except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God now you and I all right we can run right over um to let's see we can run right over to um we can run right over and run reference Jesus said except a man be born again right except a man be born again so hold that thought. Um, okay. Hold that thought. In Jesus' name. Alright. Except the man be born again, he cannot receive the kingdom of heaven. Now, Nicodemus is going to ask a question. See the my C C C C C um this is yeah we're gonna have to y'all hang y'all hang with me real quick because my um and we don't necessarily have to use that laptop it's not acting right let's see here i i can't i don't like when the enemy get in the let's see
let me see. Matthew 18, 3 and 3. Alright. So, let's see what Matthew 18 and 3 says. And, and honestly, I do like using my laptop. I do, saints. I have a preference. I have a preference. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Let's go to Matthew chapter eight, chapter eighteen. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm Matthew chapter eighteen. Again, this is a Bible study. I don't bring you no sermon. Now, do I have anything against a sermon? I really do not. But the Bible studies is what the Lord gives me. This is why you and I come together. Bible study. All right. Matthew chapter 18. And. Tell you what. Tell you what. All right. Matthew chapter 18 and verse is three. At the same time uh, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now, I started at verse 1. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The disciples wanted to know. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted. Now, have we talked about converted? We have talked about converted. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. Um, three and three, Jesus answered said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus had a question, says, uh, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? All right. So Nicodemus, I don't believe he was trying to be a smart aleck, smart butt. All right. I believe Nicodemus really wanted to know how, how can this be? How can a man be born again? I believe Nicodemus really wanted to know. Again, Jesus said to be born again or uh, to approach the kingdom like a child. A child will listen to uh, to the teacher. A child will respond. Okay, to the teacher. A child will be will learn. All right, a child will learn. A child will live. A child will grow. All right, except you be born again. Now, with that being said, it seems impossible to be born again. Yes. It seems impossible these days for grown folks to accept the kingdom of God like a child. Yes, it also seems impossible for a female, uh huh, the bride of Christ, uh huh, to go back through the journey, all right, um, by herself. Yeah, it seems impossible. For a female, okay, we're going to run over here and see you, you. I'm not going to play with you today, but I tell you what, we're going to fix it, though. It seems impossible for a female to go back through, okay, the journey by herself, okay, by herself in the name of Jesus. Um, By herself, it just seems impossible for a female to go back through the journey by herself right um have you seen all the big bad wolves and stuff out there have you seen all the predators and preys out there have you seen the beast of the field the scorpions the lions the adders the young lions all right have you seen the dragons have you seen those with ill intentions have you seen those that are users and abusers have you seen them better yet have you experienced this? All right. Have you experienced this? Let's um 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 um. Let's let's go over here. All right. 
We're going to go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 3 and 7 says, Likewise, y'all husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Okay? Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Um... Yes, likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. So some people believe that the wife don't deserve any honor. Really, the wife does deserve honor because if the wife didn't deserve honor, Jesus would not honor us. You understand that? It, everything you desire, to my gentlemen out there, then these men, you men of valor, Everything you desire from your wife, you should be. Yeah. Does that sound crazy? It shouldn't. The Bible said, uh, on these two hang all the laws and the prophets. Love God without their heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All right? So your neighbor could be a gentleman. Your neighbor could be... Your wife, your neighbor could be a child. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And here we have it where we're talking about the bride of Christ now. And Jesus even tells uh um Jesus even tells our our fine fellows out there. All right. Um he even tells our fine fellows. See here. Okay, we're going. We're all over the place today. But look, you riding or not? Huh? Huh? You riding or not? All right. Jesus in Ephesians five and twenty-two even tells our fine faithful believers out there. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Right? So, the statement just made is correct. Okay? Um, anything you desire from Jesus as the bride of Christ, which is all of us, we're one. Anything we desire from Jesus, guys, you should be willing to give that to the wife. Right? Because when it all boils down, all right, when it all boils down, you, uh, you men of valor, you are the bride of Christ when it all boils down. Again, like we said on yesterday, the enemy knows this. And because he knows spiritually, all of us make up the bride. Hmm. How can I crisscross these people up naturally? Okay. Because each and every last one of these are spiritual beings. How can I crisscross applesauce these folks up naturally? How can I crisscross applesauce these men up and make them effeminate? Make them uh, homosexuals? Make them uh, uh, lollipop? How can I make them soft? As tissue how can I do this because I know their inward parts everybody is going back to the beginning uh, when the Lord it's the Lord that turns the ship is the Lord that turns the the, the course is the Lord that uh, turns uh, makes the turn in the journey It's the Lord okay that closed the door to the ark It's the Lord that that chose for the earth to be um, consumed no more uh, with water. It's the Lord's doing. So now is the Lord's doing for us to return. Return unto me. I'll return to you. Well, where are we returning to? We are returning to the tree of life. Adam left the tree of life. Chose something else. Now Adam has his seed. The seed of his kind. Eve has the seed of her kind. And they're all going towards something else. 
Everybody, because the Lord has changed the course, the Lord has turned the ship, everybody is going back to the beginning. But now there are those that's going back to the cunningness of the serpent who is more subtle than any beast of the field. There are some that are going back to that. And these people are more cunning than you can imagine. I mean, they lay up on their bed. They plan evil stuff. How can I get your feet entangled? How can I get you to fall? How can I get you to fail? These are the seed of the serpent. Do you hear me? And then there are those of us, we're going back to the beginning and we're going back to the tree of life. And guess what else? Jesus said in the beginning, all right, now we are going to finish Ephesians 5 and 22, but Jesus said in the beginning, now, unless they take part, unless he takes part of the tree of life and be one of us and live forever, unless he takes part now because he, he knows good and evil. Because he know good and evil, we know good and evil. Yes? And now unless he turns back and takes part of the tree of life, which is what you and I eat, okay, on a daily, the tree of life. And guess what? Those of us that eat it, receive it, consume it, okay, and allow it to neutralize. Uh, neutralize. I like neutralize. Give us nutrients and neutralize us, which means I'm with the word. I'm neutral in the word. Look, everything else. You're going to have to consult the word about that. The Lord already did my bidding. Look, I'm already married. My husband already said this. If my husband said this, this is just what it is. This is why we are to practice a submission as females to uh, the male counterpart. Amen. Because if we can practice a uh, submission to the male counterpart, then we can uh, have that submission when it comes to God. Amen. And look, my husband already said this and my husband already said that. Ain't no use of you telling me nothing different. My husband already have spoken. He already done spoke. He already done said. Ain't no use of you saying nothing else. This is what it is. Why? Because I put full trust, full confidence, full faith in what my husband has said. What my husband has spoken. Amen. So in the beginning, he said, unless now they take part of the tree of life and live forever. There are those of us were taking part of the tree of life and we're living what? Forever, forever. Ephesians uh, 5.22, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Amen. That he might be, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, Jesus, hallelujah, did not go around talking bad about his wife. Good God. And that right there, you know, when you look around these days, you see a lot of men. They walk around. They talk bad about their wife. They talk, But what they don't understand is they're talking bad about themselves. All right. They're talking bad about themselves because the two were made one flesh and dwell together. Amen. One flesh and dwell together. And a lot of time, people don't understand that. Right. People just don't understand that. Husbands love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. That he might sanctify. Now, this is what a leader does. This is what um, the, the strong per the strong man. This is what he does. He sanctify and cleanse. OK, by what? The washing of the word of the word. This is why. Uh, a husband that is in God is one of the best of uh, the best you can get. I didn't say he's the best looking. I didn't say he's the best. Uh, at, uh, he has the best job. I didn't say uh, he has the most money. I said he's the best you can get. A lot of times, this is what messes women up. They go and get the one with the best job. They go and get the one with the best muscles. They go and get the one with the best uh, 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 speech. Okay, his speech. I can just lay. I can make a bed on the stuff he say. Right? And I can pull the covers up on the stuff he say. Well, most times, a lot of women go for these type of guys. Not understanding, you can have all the muscles in the world you want. You can have all the good speech in the world you want. 
Okay, you can have all the money in the world you want. You can have all, all of that, all the fine cars and stuff in the world you want, and you can still be unhappy because that man is not rooted and grounded in the word, and Abba is not his teacher. You understand? Abba is not telling him who to be and how to be, right? And be in, if, if the Lord is not telling him who to be and how to be, that's a problem. That is a problem. And can I tell you there are those by the droves that are in the church today, they can quote scriptures to you and it still don't mean that they're eating that nutrients. It don't mean that because Jesus said it, Father said it, okay? Unless he take part <clears throat> of the tree of life and eat it, okay? Many people Sunday after Sunday, Saturday after Saturday, Friday after Friday, Tuesday after Tuesday, Thursday after Thursday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Monday after Monday, all right? Many people are going and occupying the church building, but it does not mean they are taking part of the tree of life and eating it. It's time out for all this knowledge, knowledge. Not nobody can know about what you know. Are you eating this? Are we eating this? Because that's when it makes a difference in a relationship. That's when it makes a difference in a marriage. That's when it makes a difference when it comes to being sons and daughters of God. That's when it makes a difference when it becomes uh, being a brother, when it comes being a sister. Are we eating this? Are we eating this? Amen. So we were on, we're in First Peter, all right, um, three, likewise you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. This, again, what we were talking about yesterday, Marriage is not a play thing. It is not a play play. Let's get together. Let's rock the boots. Let's hey, let's go on vacation. Let's take photos. Let's let's have a great time. Let's go over and have couple couples tea. Okay, let's have couples tea. Let's go. It's couples night. Let's get together. Let's bowl. Let's do this. Let's do that. We we'll have fun. Oh, let's have matching pajamas. Oh, let's do this. Oh. Likewise, ye husbands, do well with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. That's that's big. Now, I'm not a male, and I'm not, and I don't have testosterone like no man. And it's on, it's it's a limited edition of things that I can tell you about men. Uh, the Holy Ghost can um, reveal things about men to me, but uh, yeah, I'm limited in the things that I know about a man. The Bible teaches me. The Holy Ghost tells me. Amen. And then what I know, uh, what I've learned so far about men, right? But just standing back and just viewing the average man, it's really something, especially when you look at them and if they could lift up a bus, right? Look at me. I'm lifting this bus up, right? Uh, yeah, just the average man, you know. When you say give honor unto the wife, is that something that, oh, uh, what? Is that like, what? Okay, do what? Huh? You want me to do what? Um, honor. Honor. All right, honor. Honor. Honor is high respect. High, high respect, okay, and great esteem, great esteem. Now, dear Rudy Poops running around out here, that they, they don't, they don't know. They, when you say honor, that's a cuss word to them. Now they can have a filthy old potty mouth. You can, you can literally take tissue and wipe their mouth and get stuff off of it. That's how much a potty mouth people got these days. When, when you say honor. The wife? What? So even in that, that takes God. It don't take uh, them going to listen to nobody. You got to honor her. Okay, okay, I honor her. And then for two days, I can fake 
honoring somebody and then oh, there's the real me again no this is uh going and 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 and, ta and taking the fruit but not eating it you hear me this is this is this is this is learning a knowledge but don't really it's it's not a part of who we are so when when the lord says uh likewise um the bible says likewise ye husband dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor to the wife honor honor high respect and esteem great esteem what 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 they don't get high respect and great esteem they like to have people laughing at their wives and <laughs> ah, she's stupid she's a stupid something they're always telling embarrassing things about their wife honor oh lord cover me until i recover cover me until i recover cover you until you recover that's not what you're doing to you with your wife you you're not covering her until she recover. Honor. So that's why I say anything a man desires from his wife, he should be that. When it comes to the Lord, and when it comes to him treating her with honor, he wants honor. He should give honor. Now, the Bible tells us, ladies, to what? Respect. The Bible tells the man to what? Love her. Uh, and it tells the woman to what? Respect him. But when we ball, when we look up the definition of giving honor unto the wife, there is respect right there. Many years people say, God didn't say that a man had to respect the, the wife. God said that the man had to love her. But God did say that the woman had to respect the man. Respect is mutual. Respect is mutual. It's right here in the word. Honor. honor. High respect. Great esteem. Because when it all boils down, all of us healthy in the mind. We know that we're the bride of Christ and we want God, we want Jesus to cover us in prayer. We want Jesus to continue uh, 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 having faith in us that we are going to turn up to be that bride, okay, that he can rejoice for over in Revelation 19. We want him to keep on praying for us that we make it back through because only thing the enemy sees is a weak woman that's what the devil see a weak woman on a journey okay she's the weakest vessel and she's trying to make her way back to the tree of life and and so she can live forever and if we let her we stupid if we let her we ignorant if we let her we dumb if we let her then we're not the most subtle of the field if we let her make it back so what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch her we're gonna make sure that if she, if her feet if her pinky toe even look like it's coming off the word we're gonna burn her we're gonna ball her we're gonna crucify her we're gonna hang her we're gonna we're gonna burn her we're gonna roast her when if it look like the pinky toe is off the word, we're going to kill her. Why? Because these are seeds of serpent. That's why. They're the seeds of the serpent. And we, if we let this woman make it back, uh, and the only thing we see because we're carnal is a woman. We don't see the host of angels with her. We don't see Christ in her, the hope of glory. All we see is the woman. And if we let this woman make it back to the tree of life and live for ever I'll crucify every demon that's been walking with me I'll crucify every seed of Satan that's been walking with me I'll crucify you I'll burn you I'll torment you because you let this woman make it back Revelation 19 and 6 
And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great... I'm turning the page, so it's going to break up. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Amen. And so with that being said, the Lord, the Holy Ghost just gave me this saints. Do you know saints? Do you know? All right, uh, there's a Christmas song. Do you know that your baby boy will someday walk on water? Mary, did you know? Now, I want to ask you, did you know that each and every time, Holy Ghost just gave this to me, each and every time we open up our mouth blah, blah, and allow God to speak his truth, is our shield and butler. And, and, and every time we allow God to speak his truth through us, it sends shock waves through the atmosphere and the hemisphere of the world. Now, you and I, because we we're we're prone to seeing it uh, microscopic, you and I, we don't see it this way, but each and every time. The, a person allows God to speak his truth through their through their mouth, through their horn, through their instrument. It sends waves through the earth every time. And in the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. Every time God's word go forth, it damages the, the enemy's kingdom. This is why you wonder, why is the devil fighting me? I'm so little. I'm so insignificant. I don't know much. Why is the devil fighting me? Because each and every word spoken, you better hear me. Each and every word spoken by those of us that are on the horn, it sends waves through the world. It don't matter if it's on podcast. It don't matter if it's on YouTube. It don't matter if it's on Facebook. It don't matter where it is. It don't matter if it's in our house, if it's on the street corner, if it's in a church. It don't matter where it is as long as we're on the horn and allowing God to speak through us. It is sending shock waves through the world and it's sending beams of light. Your city set on the hill that can't be hid. It's sending beams of light through the atmosphere. Who sees the beam of light? The enemy sees the beam of light. You understand? And because he sees the beams of light coming out of your mouth. Okay. Then this is why the attacks come. Because it's just like we said. It's just like the Holy Ghost said. He sees a woman. The enemy looks at men. He sees a woman. A woman. This is why he desires to to cause men to be crossed up because when I look at y'all I see something that's supposed to connect as the bride I see somebody that Jesus has went to prepare a place for I thought that I won when I killed him but I realized that I didn't win I realized that I lost I realized that Jesus went down I realized he came up with the keys I realized now he sent back a comforter and those that will allow the comforter in I realize that they've opened up their hearts now Jesus has multiplied himself I realize that there's a problem there are those that are sounding the alarm I realize that there are those that are willing to go through the persecution to speak God's truth I realize this and because I realize this I know what they're doing with the Tower of Babel everybody knew what the goal was the Tower of Babel everybody knew what the end result was supposed to be and the enemy knows what the end result for us is supposed to be if I can get this one that one and that one crossed up I can stop them 
Because what he sees is a woman on a journey that's going back to the tree of life. I fooled Adam, but appeared Jesus has come on the scene I thought I won I realized I lost and now Jesus is within operating the ship and because he's within operating the ship I I gotta call Eve to fall. I gotta cause Eve to fail with her flesh. The lust of the eye, the lust of the the, the pride of life. Okay, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. I have to work with these three to get their flesh to fail, to get that man to fail, to get that woman to fail because they are the bride of Christ. If they hey. Somebody's going to pay because and when I look at the world now, there's this, big, this this great big giant called Goliath. And then there are a few of us that are the little Davids running around, okay, sounding the horn, being the light. But there's a great big giant. And this giant is made up of all type of stuff. Yeah. It's made up of all type of doctrine, all type of uh, bullies and people, you know, they just, they, they just don't realize, they don't realize. And then you have those of us that are sounding the alarm, crying aloud, sparing not, lifting up the voice like a trumpet. And the devil says, if you let them win now we've all, we already have the victory we've already won but if you let them win if you let them make it now the enemy has no power in his hands none but because his mind is so confused like literally he was with God and thought that he could esteem himself, you know what I'm saying, and got kicked out. Literally, you can tell he his mind's pea brain. He can't. He 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 just he he he. You know what I'm saying? It's just something that's he's wired a certain way. So in his mind, he's thinking. If this big giant that I've created and made, all these folks that believe that they're going somewhere, if they let these children of God make it back, I'm going to burn them. Especially the ones with the knowledge. Especially, especially the ones that know scripture. I'm really going to burn them because they were inside enemies. You know, you have those inside enemies. They know how to talk like you and they know how to act like you. But but really, they, they're they enemies of the cross. Well, he says, especially them. I'm, I'm really going to get you. Because you were the one that was supposed to have got them. Because you know how to talk like them. I'm really going to get you. I'm really going to burn you. I'm really going to torment you. Why? Because you fail. But, this, he's, but the mission is to fail. When it comes to the enemy, the mission is to fail. And, and he knows that. But again, his mind is wired to. And if it wasn't, he would be somewhere uh, under a tree just waiting for judgment. But because his mind is so messed up, he's still going to and fro in the land. Seeking whom he may devour. So, how can we be born again? Nicodemus asked the question, how? How is one born again? First, and this is what a lot of people do not do. First, denounce, renounce everything you know. Everything you know. Because kids don't know nothing for real they only know what they're taught and these kids are taught what by 
who someone they trust um these kids are taught by somebody they trust parents many people say well I've been taught and I've been taught and I've been taught by this one I've been taught by that one you know we went to school to learn this school to learn that but this is what the Lord had to say about this in John chapter 10 verse 27 he said my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me so many times a lot of these people are just not God's sheep a lot of these people are just programmed to talk like you and they are serpent seed Can I tell you that whoever teaches you, you kind of sort of, you kind of sort of, you kind of sort of, and, and I'm trying to choose my words correctly. Whoever teaches you, you kind of sort of act like them, right? And when I say act like them, I don't mean uh, since they have on red shoes, I'm going to wear red shoes. No, but you kind of sort of act like them like, um, have the mannerisms as far as if they're a happy person, you're a happy person. If they find the, the, the joy in everything, you'll find yourself start to find the joy in everything. No matter if it look chaotic. No, I'm looking for God in this situation. Where's Abba? Right? Well, the Holy Ghost is who lead us and guide us in all truth and righteousness. So... As long as he's teaching us, we have attributes of him. But you take a atheist, you take a, a Hinduism, you take a Buddhist, take somebody like that. And all of these, they go, so I, hey, I'm going to be the teacher of, of these folks. I'm going to teach them about Christianity. I'm going to teach them about the Bible. I'm going to teach them this because, hey, I'm smart. You take these folks, right? And you give them the Bible and let them teach this Bible to you. What? What? Watch. I don't care what they teach you out of that Bible. You're going to walk out of there with their mannerisms. You're going to walk out of there with their spirit. Because people that teach you, they, that. This is why the Lord tells us to come by the washing of the water of the word. Because. He says, I need a clean instrument because if I don't have a clean instrument and if you are this and you're that and you're this and you're that, this is going to come out and spill out on, on the people. So a lot of times we feel like uh, that's, the, that's extra. Okay, I want you to spend a weekend, spend a month, 30 days in a room with a toxic individual just you and that toxic individual everywhere they go you go except to the restroom everywhere they go you go spin spin you can take your bible with you you can take all that with you but just spend quality time 30 days with a toxic individual and see don't that spirit try to fight you and rub off on you so this is why the Lord asked for clean vessels. And this is why the Holy Ghost that comes where? From God. In Jesus' name says, I'm going to lead you and guide you in all truth and righteousness. Yet, it's hard for people to see, perceive, understand. Why? Why do the Holy Ghost have to lead and teach us? Why? Because it's pure. Because my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. 28 says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never, never perish. Neither shall any man, 
not one man pluck them out of my hand nobody will be able to pluck them out of my hand because they're mine they're mine so now there are those of us we're on a journey and the journey is to make it back to the place the journey is every day to self evaluate the journey is every day to check check and recheck the journey is repentance repenting people don't like to talk about repenting sometimes people are too prideful to repent right sometimes the repentance comes out like this i repent you know you know most of the times i repent i'm not wrong y'all but you know <laughs> you know i just repent for other people's sake because most of the time i'm not wrong uh brother so and so i repent uh so, so and so i repent to you that ain't, that's not a re that's not a true repentance You've already told people you feel like you're right. You already told uh, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, that you feel like you're right, but you're going to repent anyway because it's the Bible way. You, that ain't no repentance. That's pride. That's arrogance. That's, 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 that's haughty. Honey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to repent to her when she come in here. But, I, I, honey, all the reason I'm repenting for her so she can go on. Because I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Oh, hey, hey. Well, look, I, look, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I repent. Wasted breath. Wasted air. Wasted. Wasted words. God didn't receive it. It, it. it just didn't count. Because in the bottom of your heart, you feel like you're right anyway. Just alms before men. Pride. pride if we are going to be serious about going back if we don't go if we're going to be serious about taking part of the tree of life and living forever all of these things must be addressed everything everything the holy ghost told us on this 22nd Everything must be addressed. Amen. Even when it comes down to wives. When it comes down to husbands. When it comes down to knowing that this is symbolic to something way bigger than us. But how can we make this work? Knowing. Alright. That we're in something that's symbolic to something way bigger than us. So I really do need to treat you the way I want to be treated. If I don't want to be, if I don't want you up on the internet, uh, listen at men all night, maybe I shouldn't be on the internet. Listen at women all night. If I don't want you going and visiting women and sleeping with them in hotels and stuff, maybe I shouldn't go and, and, and sleep around. If I don't want you out in the street, talk about me like a dog. Maybe I shouldn't be out in the street talking about you. You understand? Doing unto others. It's really easy. On these two hang all the laws and the prophets. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And love God with all our heart, minds, and soul. All of that applies not just in the church setting. All of that applies not just when we're dealing with brothers and sisters in Christ. All of that applies when we're at home and we close the door and we lock it to make sure no intruders come in and now it's just us it's just family it's just the kids all of all of the word applies to even those that are closest to us the word applies amen so if all hearts and minds are clear we're going to go ahead on and get off of here. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to go ahead on and get off of here. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus. Saints, I want to say that I love you so much. And until next time, be blessed. In Jesus' name.